A month ago, Microsoft 365 Copilot was announced with a huge fanfare, and I declared that Microsoft had won work. But since then, there has really been silence, and few more details have emerged, although there have been some reports of the first signs of seeing Copilot being integrated into the Office apps. So many of you may be wondering, when will this arrive? How will it work? And what will the impact be? Will this really shake up work as I know it? What we have seen so far has been very exciting, so let's break that down. So we've seen examples of Copilot adding value across all of the main components of Microsoft 365, including Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Teams. So we certainly expect that this technology is going to be deeply integrated into Microsoft 365. However, as more and more people gain value from other tools like Planner or Lists, it'll be interesting to see just how much Copilot and its tools interface with those products too. Until your Microsoft 365 Copilot starts reminding you automatically, please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you'll see the next one that I release. In an application like Outlook, features like Focused Inbox might already give us a little bit of insight into how Copilot will help us, just in a new and supercharged way. Copilot will help, in Microsoft's words, to triage your inbox. But I think it's reasonable to expect that the messages it will be prioritizing and those it will not will in some way be connected to the data points that they're already using in a feature like Focused Inbox. And that helps you keep unwanted emails out of sight and the emails that you really might want to see um, in front of you in your inbox. One of the interesting features that was highlighted for email was the ability to be able to summarize long email threads on your mobile device. And we know how good products like ChatGPT are at taking existing text and providing a summary, and how much more frustrating the experience can be of dealing with these dense, complex email threads on mobile devices versus desktop. So I think this will be a welcome feature. But it will be interesting to see whether the subtleties of dramatically different and nuanced fields or the internal languages of different businesses can be dealt with easily by this technology. And for certain email exchanges, it may be really risky to rely on an AI-generated summary rather than reading the entire email thread yourself. In Word and PowerPoint, we can expect Copilot to assist in our creative process by synthesizing content based on different documents already in Microsoft 365. And while I'm excited for this capability to generate text, I'm even more excited for the fact that it can also help with design. The announcement information implies that you can take a model document that's designed in the way you want it to look, and it will apply similar branding to another document using the Copilot features. This will be a great help in many small businesses where often the barrier is not about expertise on the product or service, but in clean and consistent presentation that holds up against bigger competitors. In Teams, we're getting a lot of new features with many of them in some way already integrated into the Teams premium experience that had been previously announced, but not released so far. Copilot is bringing a whole new set of features to Teams all around the experience of attending meetings and even the experience of not attending meetings. It's going to help you with understanding what has happened in a meeting, whether it's because you turned up a little bit late or because you weren't able to attend that meeting at all. You'll be able to get an AI-driven recap of the meeting that highlights things like the actions that were decided what things were considered prior to a decision being taken, and where your name came up in that meeting. I think this will really help people, particularly when there's a situation where you're double booked or perhaps something else comes up. But I will be interested to see just what impact this might have on the efficacy of meetings over time, as if there's an easy path for those who should be in a meeting to not be there so much, does that have an impact on the decision-making process or the quality of decisions that get taken at the time? Um, time will only show us this, but uh, I think it'll be an interesting set of factors to consider in the long term as these types of features 
roll out, probably not just within Teams, but in other similar platforms from other companies as well. I think it's fair to say that there's a decent amount of fear out there right now about what impact AI will have on the jobs market and whether AI tools will outright be stealing people's jobs. But I think it's fair to say that Microsoft is clear that Copilot isn't going to be the tool to do that. As everywhere along the line, it focuses on the fact that Copilot is going to help you create a first draft it's not going to help you create a final product. Copilot scans the target files and gets to work, quickly generating a first draft. Now you have a professional looking presentation that you can hone and polish. Um, so that human interaction is still going to be necessary to get from the initial steps of what Copilot creates for you, right the way through to a product that you're going to be happy to deliver to your internal or external audiences. And I think this is really an important difference versus a lot of the hype around AI that's out there on platforms like YouTube, where there are people saying, hey, with with tools, AI tools out there, you're gonna be able to do zero work and end up with 10 grand a day or something like that. Whereas Microsoft's ideas around this are a lot more measured. This is going to be a co-pilot. It's gonna be an assistant. It's gonna be something that helps us in our job. It doesn't take away those jobs and replace them. The aspect of human creativity, human knowledge, human expertise is still going to be there and Copilot is going to help us to leverage all of the data that we've got, all of the information that has come before, but it's not designed to just do it for us, it's designed to help us along the way. Now, I know there are other products out there um, that are more focused on automation, on, on AI just doing stuff for us, but if you take a look at this video that I put out recently, um, I focused on how to use the OpenAI API in order to respond to customer feedback in Teams. And what was very important in what I put together there, and I think is increasingly important as people turn to AI, is the human oversight component. AI might help us to do stuff uh, more easily, it might help us to do stuff quicker, um, but AI isn't ready yet just to do everything for us end to end. So I think Microsoft's uh, perspective on this makes sense. I think the fact that this is a tool for the first draft, not the final product, makes a, a lot of sense in that. Um, and I think it's going to be some time before for everything you're ready just to hand over your keyboard um, and rely on the AI to do everything for you. There was this Gizmodo article a couple of weeks ago about a breach of proprietary data at Samsung when their own employees decided to use ChatGPT to find a fix to an issue they were having with the source code on one of their products. Now you might ask, why is this a problem? Well, it's all to do with what happens to the prompts that you submit to ChatGPT as they're held on to by OpenAI as a means to improve its models. And this isn't a secret, this is clearly laid out by OpenAI, um, and the company even warns you against using any sensitive information in your prompts. Um, so make sure you're not just copying and pasting private company data into ChatGPT as you're using it. So I think there's a very reasonable fear that whether it be OpenAI or any other AI company developing large language models or similar technology, that these just become a kind of black hole, gulping down all the data they can lay their digital fingers upon. So when we talk about companies like Microsoft or Google adding AI to their business software, it's not unreasonable for us to be concerned that our company's proprietary, secret, private information is just gonna be added to that buffet. Now we don't yet know specifically how Microsoft 365 Copilot is gonna deal with its customers' data. But I think it's reasonable for us to expect that it's gonna work in a similar manner in relation to data security and compliance as the Azure OpenAI service. There's a lot to dig into there, but the headline can be seen in the OpenAI service FAQs with the question, how is Azure OpenAI service 
different from the OpenAI API, the service that OpenAI provides? And the answer to that is Azure OpenAI Service brings together OpenAI API and Azure enterprise level security, compliance, and regional availability. Now for further reinforcement, the Microsoft Learn pages to do with the OpenAI service outline that customer data is not retained for model training and that prompts, etc., only remain with Microsoft for 30 days in case of a need for human review due to abuse. However, for certain regulated use cases, organizations can even opt out of this 30-day retention, in which case Microsoft retains no data related to the prompt sent to the large language model. Beyond this, those pages also confirm that OpenAI service doesn't actually send any data to OpenAI. Microsoft hosts OpenAI's models entirely within its Azure infrastructure, so no data sent through the OpenAI service exits Azure or is shared with third parties. Microsoft has described in broad strokes how Microsoft 365 Copilot will work, combining your Microsoft 365 data with enrichment data from the Microsoft Graph in order to improve your prompt before sending that prompt to the LLM. It then improves the response before presenting it to you. I think it's reasonable to imagine that the technology used to present the data to the LLM is similar to that used in the OpenAI service. And we have a parallel with this, with how Power Automate is just built on top of Azure Logic Apps. And so it seems logical that the protection of our business data in Copilot will be roughly similar to the protection that is outlined for the OpenAI service. If you notice visually, the canvas shown off for Copilot interaction inline in apps is astonishingly similar to the canvas we see for initiating and editing in loop components. On top of this, we can infer from the way that Copilot is described to work, with Microsoft 365 content being passed along with Microsoft Graph data, which is literally the database that comprises the relationships between all the different types of entities in your Microsoft 365 tenant, that it was doing on a data level in the background something incredibly similar to what the front-end user-facing purpose of Loop is, and Loop components, and Fluid Framework in the Office app. If we think about the history of Microsoft 365, with organizations moving to OneDrive, SharePoint Online, with their cloud-based search and reliance on the Microsoft Graph. What this has done is taken a lot of pressure off of end users to know where content is. Back in the days of shared drives, you really had to fish through a sea of multi-level shared drive hierarchies to find that one Word document you knew existed somewhere. But in Microsoft 365, the focus has really diminished on where something is, although the focus has really not diminished in terms of what something is. An email is not the same as a PowerPoint deck, and a Word document is not the same as an Excel spreadsheet, despite all these files just containing bits and bytes that together comprise your business data. Look into the future, this might be the start of a paradigm shift that Microsoft is pushing us towards, where we've already made this journey to the cloud, and now we're going to make a journey where we can forget about whether we want to use Word or Outlook or Excel or PowerPoint, and we're just using information and creating new information as need be for the project at hand. We might see a situation where the, the what of our business data diminishes in importance and actually what becomes important to us is the value that that data is allowing us to convey to whatever entity or person or project we're working on at the time. We might see future generations of office workers that just have a concept of working in Microsoft 365 and creating what is necessary at the time, as opposed to bouncing between different apps for different purposes um, that make them realign their thoughts every time they do so. So you'll have a workspace that you're working in, 
and an AI co-pilot that makes sure that you're never reinventing the wheel and you're getting as much benefit as you can from what came before, whether that be from data that exists within your own business or data that's out there on the internet that can help you with the project that you're working on right now. I'm not sure that that's the direction that we're going in, but it certainly does seem appealing to me. Um, and I think that it looks like we might be starting to head down that path. What do you think? Leave me your ideas of where this is heading in the comments. Are you excited about this? Or are you still a bit fearful about the impact it's going to have on the way we work? Let me know. I hope this video has been useful to you. I will continue to make content about uh, Copilot and Loop and these new technologies as new information arises. But until next time, bye bye.